I sometimes see people struggle with a couple of the basics of conditional formatting. So here's a quick tutorial and also a little trick about allowing people to override formulas, but flagging that. So a couple of little lessons in here. Um, so firstly, I always like turning things into a table. So this is going to be an input table. Okay. So control T, click OK. That's now my table. I'd always recommend naming it as well. I've got my little table here, but I really should go up to table design and name it here. Not that it really matters for this demo, but let's say call it table input. That'll do. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I want to highlight the whole row with a particular color if the day is today. So when this is a big table, big list, it'll just flag up today, quite obviously. Um, so it just guides you to it. So what I'm, rather than building some sort of formula inside conditional formatting, which you can do, I tend to these days prefer to build my formula outside and then just collapse that column, just so it's really obvious and much easier to fix. And, it's, and, and people are aware there's a formula there then. Okay, so I'm just gonna go uh, equals that, equals today. Okay, open the bracket, close the bracket, that's all. And there we go, that's today. And all you want when with this conditional formatting formula is the answer to be true or false. Because then I'm just gonna say, look, if that's true, do the formatting. All right, so then we're just gonna um, highlight all the data. So we can either hover over there, okay, or you can click in a cell and control A, but if you do it that way, the control A way, just be careful. I've got this cell selected now. That's the active cell. So when I'm writing my conditional formatting, I need to refer to this cell, C9. So just be careful. Make sure you know what cell you've got active. Otherwise, the conditional formatting is all out of whack. That catches people out, catches me out. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go to the Home tab conditional formatting straight down to new rule and use a formula and we're going to go equals and this is the key bit that's the highlighted cell so I want to click on this one okay and then I definitely always because I want to highlight the whole row I always want to check column C so the dollar sign needs to stay there but I want it to look at a different row for each row. I want it to check against this one, this one, this one, etc. So that's it. And because it hits true, it'll make the whole row blue or whatever color you pick. So let's pick a color. Format, fill, let's go a little dark blue, shall we? And then the font, let's make it white. Click OK and click OK. So there we go. It is the 4th of September today. That is true, okay? So if one of these was true instead, I'm just going to type over it. That would go that color. Um, and then I wouldn't I wouldn't show this column. Um, I don't want to show this column and talk about this in a second. So I'd highlight them, but don't right click hide. Okay, go to data and right across is group. Just click on that group button. Okay, and it should put it a little collapsible icon up the top there. Okay, so there we go. I prefer doing it that way, nice and easy to show and hide, and it's obvious that something's hidden. Safer. All right, so then in here, I wanna put a little data validation box. So I'm just gonna highlight it. Uh, control space bar, okay. Uh, let's go to data validation, data, data validation. Let's pick from a list, okay. Source is going to be here. Again, there's, there's better ways of setting this up with named ranges and things, but not the lesson for today. Not about drop downs. Okay. All right. So there's our list, and that'll do. Okay. Could put message in and things like this. So here's some products. It's shreddy small. Okay. There's Weetabix large. All right. And then I want to do some X lookups. So equals X lookup. I'm going to look that up, comma, in this list, comma, and bring back the pack size and press enter. 
All right. And then with the blanks, I would just want to put an if at the start. So if. Okay. This cell equals blank, then blank. Otherwise, do the formula. Right at the end, put a little bracket. Okay. Now, because this is a formula, I'm actually going to make these columns a slightly different color. All right, so I'm just going to make those gray or something. And I'm going to make these columns a slightly different color. Generally go a bit darker than that, but I won't bother changing it for now. Okay, just to show that it's sort of a bit different. And again, I do the same thing for these two columns. Great. And then I'm just going to copy, paste that, press F2. And then rather than bringing back the pack size, I'm going to bring back the cost. Beautiful. So all really good. Now with this, you could actually add a little check to see if anybody's typed over your formulas. You can sort of lock it down to force it to, uh, you know, to not allow people to change this. But let's say something, you know, sometimes things are wrong or there's a new cost and we haven't got time to go back to the validation and all this sort of stuff. It can happen. You really want to pick it up. So here's the little check. Um, I'm just going to go and say equals is formula. All right, and I'm actually going to reference both these cells. So it'll check if there's, it'll basically give a, a true true. Okay. But then if I add zero to it, it forces it into a one one. Okay. Which is great. But what I want to do is check if it's not a formula. So before I do that, I'm going to wrap the whole thing in as a not. So I want to do the in the opposite. So not is formula. So that'll give me false, false, plus zero. Okay, will give me um, zeros. So they'll turn it into numbers because I'm going to sum those up. So when I sum it all, okay, sum this. And right at the end, probably best to do this as a lambda actually. Okay, so this is not an issue because everything's a formula. But if somebody happened to type over something with 100, see, this is actually showing that there's a, something there. So then from here, I can highlight these and use some conditional formatting and go, okay, uh, home, conditional formatting, new rule, use formula. And again, I could change this to, and this probably best to do that. Um, actually, let's do it. I, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't shortcut this stuff. So finally, okay, I just want to do a condition to say, okay, that uh, is greater than, I want it to go true. I want it to be an issue if it's greater than zero. Okay. All right. So now we just highlight these cells here. We go home, conditional formatting, new rule, use formula, and just refer, now check, this is what catches you. There's my cursor in that row. Okay, so I'm gonna to refer to this one. Okay, so use formula, so just simply equals this cell, must refer to column, ah, oh, I wanna to refer to column D, I want the reference to the six to change, and then from a format point of view, Let's go uh, fill and let's just flag those as orange. Okay. With, uh, yeah, that'll do, orange. With make sure the font is bold and black. Okay. And okay. So now if we type over this with a six, those are being flagged. Now, the downside of having one formula check is that both are being flagged, so it's not obvious which one's the issue. You do have this little green flag in there. Um, if you did want to do them individually, you could just highlight both and actually write the formula. So home, conditional formatting, uh, 
uh, let's go manage rules. Let's just change this one. It'll be a nice way to show you how to edit these. So I'm going to go edit rule. And rather than equals d6, you could go equals not is formula. Open the bracket. Click on the first cell that you've got highlighted here. See, that's where my cursor is. Okay. Get rid of all the dollar signs. I've just pressed F4 a few times to toggle through there. Close the bracket. Close the bracket. And then OK and apply. And this time only the one you've changed is impacted. So this could be 500. Now you don't really want people to type over your formulas. Terrible idea. But I've come across a few scenarios where it's just necessary. Okay. Ideally have override columns and other things so you don't mess up your formulas. But if you are going to let somebody mess up your formulas, you really want that in there. So just a little tip might come in handy. There we go. Hope you find that sort of stuff useful. Okay, let me know what you think in the comments. Love to hear from you. And I'll catch you in the next video. Before you go, check out one of my other videos or playlists and click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.